Hi everyone, my name is Natalie. Today I'm gonna do something that I haven't done before but that I've been wanting to start doing this year and that is what I'm gonna call suggested reading. So when you're reading a non-fiction book often you get towards the end and you get a list of books that uh, are suggestions of where to go next uh, on any particular subject that the book covers and I feel like I generally really like to give uh, recommendations that are thematic or I like reading uh, in a thematic way uh, and so I've been wanting, I've been toying with the idea of making this sort of a video series on this channel to uh, recommend nonfiction books on a particular subject to um, give you some ideas of books to pick up within that subject that I don't necessarily love all of the books but that they have something that they might be suitable for a particular curiosity or interest or angle really on the subject itself um, that I want to sort of highlight. So uh, I hope that that makes sense. So basically I'm going to start today with doing a suggested reading for reading about legal justice. Today I'm going to talk about six books that talk about uh, the legal, legal justice in a broad sense within three categories. So I'm going to start off talking about two books that I would recommend for one someone who is interested in the legal justice from the perspective of mental illness. The book that really started to make me think about the way that mental illness affects the justice that you do you are um that you were given as an individual is The Collective Schizophrenia by Esme Wei and Wang. This is an essay collection was, that was one of my favorite books last year and the, the idea in, in particular that this book raises in terms of justice is or justice and the legal system in general is the right of an individual for their own agency and control. Uh, in particular this comes up in terms of forced treatment and um, the idea of consent when it comes to medical treatment for mental illness. So she obviously talks specifically about schizophrenia. This is uh, sort of applies to other forms of mental illness as well, of course, uh, but she talks from this particular experience. And I think it's such an important aspect to think about when is it uh, okay for someone else to make the um, to take away the uh, right of an individual to uh, take away their control or their agency, their right to decide on their own lives. Of course, this is related to the legal system because uh, someone is uh, either legally um, free to make their own choices about their own lives or someone else uh, gets that legal right over them. So this book was the first that really got me thinking about uh, this as a problem area within uh, the law. The other book that also touches on the mental illness side of things is The Center Cannot Hold by Ellen R. Sachs. This is both talking about the first treatment uh, experience of someone who is mentally ill or has a mental disorder, the demands on you as someone who is uh, diagnosed as mentally ill, what how that ch changes your life, how you are forced to confine to specific rules on how to live because you are known as mentally ill. So this book also sort of furthers that discussion. This is interesting because it also gives the sort of the inside, um, the inside story of someone who is, who has a mental disorder schizophrenia again, um, but is also studying law and how that uh, she changes her perspective, also the fact that she is um, actively working with these kinds of uh, cases. She both has personal experience of uh, the way that mental health is dealt with within the legal system, but also she has the inside perspective on the legal system and trying to work to change it. So uh, I found it really interesting to see both perspectives in this book. Um, so if you are looking for books that will challenge your ideas about mental illness and the legal system and how the legal system often fails people with mental illnesses, then these two are both worth your time.
Then I have two books that are within the category of race in the legal system. The book that I'm currently reading uh, is related to uh, the, the wider context of uh, race and the legal system or racism in le the legal system and that is Policing the Black Man. This is an essay or an anthology collection uh, edited by Angela J. Davis and Angela J. Davis herself is a professor of law at uh, American University and a former director of the DC Public Defender Service. So she is herself um, active within the um, law community and there are many um, people either working as lawyers or activists who have contributed to this collection. This book covers various areas of the legal system and the way that it is biased against black men in particular but also other groups like people of color in general and um, black women as well. In the introduction by Angela J. Davis herself um, she talks about how uh, black men are more often stopped and uh, prosecuted, more often given um, unfair treatment, like for example the police brutality uh, side of things. Um, she talks about how uh, the meeting with police is more often deadly for black men. Uh, they are of also more often unarmed when they are violently treated by police. Um, so the, the point that she makes in the introduction is that the injustice and the bias against black men in particular, as I said, but also other groups, uh, continues from the moment of suspicion and uh, fear uh, and br police brutality throughout the legal system's many areas. So I have only just started reading this one but it's already really thought-provoking uh, so that is also one of the reasons I've been thinking about making this video. The other book that I wanted to talk about in terms of race and the legal system is Just Mercy by uh, by Brian Stevenson. This is uh, another, like with this one, uh, it talks about the both the personal experience of the author in the way that racism is sort of integrated in the legal system in the US context specifically. And he talks, for example, about one time when he has been stopped by the police um, and the way that that unfolds is so angering and frustrating to read. So he has personal experience of the unfairness of being suspected for doing nothing. He also makes the point in this book in general that even if you have done, uh, if, even if you have committed a crime, the, the kind of violence being uh, directed at you is not uh, there's no balance between these two things and so a lot of this book that he uh, is his talking about his work uh, as a lawyer and as a someone who works specifically for uh, black men on death on death row and trying to get them out uh, off death row and um, to get more justice within the prison system so he is making the point that even someone who has committed a crime deserves humane treatment. Brian Stevenson's book shows again very clearly how um, racism and um, racism biases uh, are working in individual cases very clearly and um, in a way that will definitely make you think, uh, make you feel and probably make you angry and rightfully so. Um, I think uh, if there's any book that will make you want to act against this kind of system, that this would be the book. And then the last category that I want to talk about in terms of the legal system is the legal system and gender. So there are two books again that I wanted to talk about in connection with this one. So the first one I want to talk about in terms of the gender and the legal system is Know My Name by Channel Miller. Uh, this has been everywhere since it came out. It is a memoir about uh, Channel Miller's experience of sexual assault. A victim's treatment in the justice system is often um, re-victimization because you're constantly having to to uh, 
uh, proof, uh, prove your um, victimhood. I think a lot of the injustices that someone is experiencing through an already traumatic experience and that the, the continuous emotional toll that a uh, being a crime victim uh, is, uh, I think this book shows very clearly and very powerfully. Uh, it especially shows, of course, the uh, the relationship between, as I said, the gender and the legal system. A lot of the experiences that Chana Miller has is uh, specifically because of her being a woman in a certain situation and being mistrusted because of her actions or things she has done or not done uh, because of who she is or isn't. The creation of the victim um, image that is connected to gender and being a woman and being a woman in a particular situation and being expected to avoid certain situations for example how you are dressing uh, how much alcohol you consume this book shows a lot in uh, shows very clearly the way that women in a situation like this are being treated in the justice system and how being uh, re-victimized through the people who are supposed to protect you and help you uh, after a crime has been committed against you. The other book that I wanted to talk about in terms of the gender um, and uh, legal system overlap is uh, My Own Words by Ruth Bader Ginsburg. This book is a collection of essays, interviews, and other short writings that Ruth Bader Ginsburg has written on various areas of her work work and of her life. She's kind of an icon within uh, the American justice system and in particular she has been working a lot for uh, gender equality and racial equality within the American law context. So a lot of this book is her talking about specific cases that she's been working on and how she has been trying to create justice for with equality in mind in particular. And so again, this is both talking about her cases and the way that her cases have been somehow um, characterized by gender or racial inequalities, um, but she also talks about going through law school and all those things and how she was at first very much dissuaded or um, sort of the, the fact that the law school itself was very much uh, guarded against uh, women entering this field in the first place. So the fact that the system, the legal system, is trying to shut some people off, sh shut some people out of it, reproduces a lot of the biases that we are seeing right now. And I think uh, this book with R Ruth Bader Ginsburg definitely shows the way that the first thing that we need to change is to change the people within the system so that we can change it from the inside out. Uh, the fact that that is completely necessary, that we have to open the doors for all kinds of perspectives and all kinds of backgrounds within the system to expect that the system will reflect the diversity and multitude that we are seeing in society. Uh, that, that there should be a parallel. Um, and I think uh, this book shows very clearly what an effect her, uh, her and other women like her um, entering the field has changed, how that has changed the American uh, law and um, sort of filtering down into the everyday situation and dealings with justice. Um, so those are the books that I wanted to talk about that I, all books that I would suggest if you want to continue to think about the legal system through these three lenses, uh, gender, mental illness, and mental health, and uh, race. I think they're all worth your time, all thought-provoking and uh, gives you new angles to something that feels that should that it should be a neutral and uh, non-biased thing that uh, justice should be the same for everyone. Of course, that is not the case, and uh, I think we all could do with challenging um, the idea that that is the case. Uh, even though that is obviously the ideal, um, that we are not there, and uh, we need to face uh, the current situation that we have in order to understand that we have to 
ask for and work towards something different. So I'm just popping in very quickly with my phone to say a proper goodbye because my battery died right at the end of filming my suggested reading videos. So uh, basically I just wanted to say that if you've read any of these books I would love to hear your thoughts about them and if you have any recommendations for other books that deal with legal justice in interesting ways or from various angles that might not be as wide as the legal justice uh, as an entire system. Um, I would love to know about those as well. If you have any specific specific requests for a future suggested reading lists or videos, then feel free to share them as well. I have a few ideas of other suggested reading things that I would like to do in the near future. Um, I will have to read enough books to actually feel like I have enough to share, um, but that will be coming in the near future, hopefully. Uh, so I hope you have enjoyed this video and found it helpful, uh, and I will talk to you soon.